My word, what was the defending that we have just witnessed there? Liverpool beating United 4-2 at Old Trafford and the only goal that they scored that wasn't our fault, although you could argue it was our fault, with Matic there towards the end, was the last goal from Salah. United, abysmal defending from set pieces. It's, it, there are so many things that happened in that game that will not surprise you. They are not the first time we have seen them this season. They are problems at Manchester United that have been exposed tonight. First and foremost, we have to say Harry Maguire was missed. Clearly. Because United's defensive shape, there was not one. When it comes to set pieces in United, it's basically free goals for anybody who's playing against us. And it's, after the first 20 minutes of that game, like United, we know how we've been starting games this season. Typically, we've gone behind and improved in the second half. There, we came out fast in the first 20 minutes and we controlled the game. We pressed high, we pressed with intensity and we played well. We got the goal, Bruno Fernandes. Was it going in? I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. 1-0 up. United seemingly in control. And then we lost control so quickly. And it was from two set pieces, man. I can't believe how bad United are from corners from free kicks. The corner comes in, all sorts of mess. Nat Phillips, well, whether it was an own goal or not, again, I don't care. He passed it, Jota, 1-0. Trent, Pogba back post with Firmino, 2-1. They're going up just before half time. And he come out in the second half, you're thinking, don't worry, United have got this in the second half. We improve in the second half. Do we? Fuck, did we? Fuck. We were even worse. They go 3-1 up and we're out of the game. And then Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does the changes that should have happened probably from the first whistle. Pogba coming deeper. Fred coming off. Wow. That was a bad game from Fred. Really bad. Deserved to come off, absolutely. Then Pogba came deeper alongside McTominay. Greenwood went to the right. Rashford went to the left. And all of a sudden we have 11 men because Rashford's not playing on the right-hand side. He can't play there. Stop playing him there. Sign a right winger if you just don't play Rashford there. Jesus. And then we scored a great goal. Bruno Fernandes, Cavani, Rashford into the corner. 3-2. You think, OK, we can get into this. And then Matic comes on for bye. I'm guessing that was an injury. Was that supposed to be the, the substitution which improved and inspired United to come and get the equaliser that would have dented or maybe ended Liverpool's chase for the top four? Nah. Matic will just lose the ball. Salah will break. And then Henderson basically saying, there you go, Mo. You can score in that bit if you want that bit. Take the whole goal. Henderson, bad today. Angles, all wrong on that. Fumbled it for the third goal. Poor from Henderson today. Really, really was. And just poor from everybody. But there's a few key points that have to be highlighted from that game. And it's not just about ranting at an, indivi at an individual player, sorry. We need to sign a defensive coach. What are we doing? Set piece after set piece after set piece. And it doesn't really matter who's playing and where the set piece goes into and what sort of set piece is. We're just not defensively coached enough. I don't even think we've got one. We've got Michael Carrick, Kieran McKenna, Mike Phelan and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's the main coaching star. Now, unless Kieran McKenna is a defensive expert, I don't know, let me know in the comments. What the fuck are we doing? We need one, desperately. And clearly tonight we saw the impact of Harry Maguire on this team. Or not on this team because he was on the bench and it's no coincidence really I don't think we've had a performance like that for a while sure we've had we've had bad moments but we've come back into the game but that there the, the defensive organization the defensive shape or the lack thereof was just shocking and to let a Liverpool team that's got Nat Phillips and I can't remember the name of the other bloke as their centre-back partnership walk away from Old Trafford with three points you've got to put your head in your hands and what's that now Defeat against Leicester, defeat against Liverpool, I think that's three defeats in four games. I mean, it was always going to be a bit of a, a bit of a struggle with the fixture pile up, and we changed 10 against Leicester, so maybe you can't really pull that game into it. But, you know, I said I didn't care about the rest of the Premier League season. You always fucking care against Liverpool. Tonight, the man of the match was the fans before the game. The protests against the Glazers, hundreds turned out. It's a shame we didn't get the game called off after what I've just bloody watched. But United are, are limping. Limping towards the end of the season. And I knew this was going to happen. I could feel it. As a fan, I'm limping towards the end of the season. I'm exhausted from watching this constant football. So I can't imagine what the players are thinking. Like, But we've got a European Cup final. A chance for silverware. 
a chance for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to win that trophy. We need that. Because if we do this towards the end of the season, who have we got next? We've got Fulham. Does that think that's the next? We've got the weekend off. Isn't that nice? We've got the weekend off. And then we've got Fulham. And I think we've got Wolves. And then we've got Villarreal. Just shit tonight. Really, really. It's it's more... People were talking about how that game could have been... Oh, look, United, we could end Liverpool's Champions League campaign. We could have, but the when it comes to survival instinct and, and fighting for something you might lose or looking down at something and trying to stop it, there's a bigger survival instinct. So I'm not surprised that Liverpool had the edge tonight. Absolutely not surprised. That game meant more to them than they did, than it did for us. But if you're looking at individual performances, I think Fred was abysmal. I think Henderson was abysmal. I think by, and Lindelof, I just, I don't know. I just hate our defensive shape. I hate our defence. We are never, ever, ever going to compete for the Champions League. We are never, ever, ever going to compete for the Premier League with our current defensive setup. And looking at that team there, you saw how much of a difference Mason Greenwood made when he came on. And Gary Neville said it in the commentary. He said a lot of crap, maybe about that bye tackle, which when I first watched that bye tackle, I thought it was a penalty. Then I sort of retracted because he got the ball first. But then Gary really kind of doubled down on that. Bit of a soonest moment from him. I can't remember what I was talking about. I absolutely can't remember. But Mason Greenwood, that's what I was talking about. Gary Neville said it in the commentary there. You either decide Mason Greenwood's a striker and you sign a right winger, or you decide Mason Greenwood is a right winger and you sign a striker. One of the two. I personally still think that a defensive midfielder is our priority, and I've seen so many games this season where it would have made a huge difference. God, I wish we had signed Fabinho and not Liverpool, but... Ah, that was a shit game. That was a really bad game. I think there was a lot of individually poor performances, and it's a real shame because we started well, and the game was in our hands, but then Liverpool came back at us, and we had no response. Who was your man of the match? My man of the match, as I said, the fans outside the game before the, before the match, their man of the match tonight, for sure. What's your opinions? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. But, well, at least we've got a few days without football, right? Christ.